G'day, I'm Carl Adams, and I'm here because of Dave's incredible generosity in sharing his channel with folks like me. So if you're not familiar with my channel and its content, audio is my thing, do a lot of audio projects. I'm a bit of a nostalgia tragic. Um, you'll see that in my choice of test equipment. And I've got the sort of leaning towards analog techniques that you'd expect from someone whose day job is as a software engineer. So enjoy. So today I thought I'd look at some techniques for measuring distortion in an audio amplifier. Um, particularly techniques for trying to measure very low levels of distortion. Um, I've got a, a little project underway that'll amplify based on the um, LM1875, but um, in a compound configuration um, with it inside the feedback loop of another op amp, um, which promises to give some impressively uh, good distortion numbers. But that then is challenging to measure on an instrument um, like the uh, 3562A. Uh, which has 75, maybe 80 dB of dynamic range tops. So I was going to experiment with using an old fashioned analog distortion meter as a, uh, a notch filter, basically as the front end prior to uh, putting the signal into the uh, DSA. Let's give it a go. So one of the issues with trying to do um, accurate distortion measurements on an instrument like the 3562A is that we can't really use the internal source uh, of the 3562A because it's not quite clean enough for our purposes. So what I've gone with is uh, this little unit here, which it looks like I made it myself, but truth is I didn't. I actually bought the board off uh, eBay um, a few years ago from a chap in Latvia, I believe, um, who made some very fine um, oscillator boards. Um, I forget exactly um, how good the um, performance in terms of distortion these things are supposed to have, but uh, there's a lot of zeros involved, I know that much. So it's certainly gonna be uh, better than our ability to measure, so um, that should be fine. And just as an initial test, I've just uh, led that straight into the 3562A to see whether we can see any trace of any harmonics at all. So we're doing a um, harmonic distortion measurement of our source. Um, just straight into the 3562A and we're covering a frequency span from 100 Hz to 5.1K and uh, we set the fundamental to 996 Hz because that's what our source is actually putting out because uh, we need to make sure that the analyzer does actually correctly identify the harmonics but uh, even uh, with some averaging on Pretty much all of the harmonics are right down there in the grass. There's, there's basically nothing to be seen there. So we're seeing 86, 87 dB. Uh, basically, that's just the limitation of the instrument. Um, we're not able to measure really any harmonics at all. So I'm going to try something a little different. So what we've done here is we've now led the output of our source into the distortion meter. So this is a uh, leader brand distortion meter from the mid-1980s, I would believe. Um, I previously actually had the model before this, the uh, LDM-170, which uh, unfortunately didn't have the, uh, the automatic uh, nulling mode that this one does, and certainly trying to use that in its originally intended purpose was most frustrating as uh, attempting to get the uh, notch filter properly nulled and keep it that way was very tricky indeed. Anyway, so our output is gonna be approximately one volt RMS and we into level setting mode and we'll just adjust the uh, level set to try and get that. Try and do that without sticking your head in front of the camera probably would be good. There we go. Okay, so we now have uh, the level set and we can start adjusting. This is actually pretty good. So um, frequency is set pretty close where it should be. It's 10 times 100, around about one kilohertz. And we can just tweak the uh, balance. It's probably quite close, I often use this at a similar sort of frequency, so we can start making our way down the, the line. It's looking pretty good. 
Modifying frequency adjustments, not really changing anything at that point. We should probably leave it alone. There we go. Just play with the course balance at that point. Might just touch that and see if that can get better. Oh, can it what? There we go. Okay, that's good. Keep making your way down. Uh -huh. Dare I to touch the course adjustment? Yeah, we're still good. Oh, look at that. Now, this, I don't really want to try touching that now, I don't think. We'll try that one. Not really doing anything. Alright, let's go to there. And that's in manual mode. I don't want to start out in auto. Let's see if I can do any better. No, that's right at the limit anyway, which I don't like. Oh. Right. Oh, and I've made it worse. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Oh, probably shouldn't touch that, but we'll go near it, see what happens. Well, that's good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, looks good. All right, now I'll whack it in auto. Okay. So we're currently um, in a mode where 1% uh, distortion is uh, full scale. So if you're not familiar with these instruments, basically they're um, a notch filter um, followed by um, an amplifier and an AC millivolt meter. Um, so basically uh, anything that's left over um, after the uh, notch filter is considered to be uh, the uh, THD plus N. Um, now, the thing about this is that the limiting factor for these things is always the depth of the notch. Um, so, I mean, this thing's best measurement range is 0.1% full scale, um, and I think it's um, 0.015 or something like that is about the minimum reading you'll ever get off of it. Um, but that's not because it's 0.015% distortion um, inside the machine, it's simply that it cannot suppress the fundamental any more than that. Now, with our dynamic signal analyzer, our limiting factor there is that it has um, a 14-bit analog to digital converter. So although the, uh, the DSA has an enormous dynamic range in terms of being able to deal with uh, input signals of different magnitudes, in terms of dealing with uh, signals uh, that are occurring at the same time, uh, it's limited by the number of bits in the ADC. So that's the reason why we can't measure vanishingly small amounts of distortion. However, because we have output terminals on here, we can actually look at the signal that's coming after the notch filter. So by using this notch filter to remove um, the by far the largest part of that, in, that input signal, uh, we can make the, uh, the job of the DSA much easier. Not only that, because the, uh, the DSA allows us to not just uh, measure the, um, the THD um, in terms of measuring the harmonics in proportion to the fundamental, it also has a mode that can measure harmonic power. And by using that mode instead, we can actually uh, directly read um, THD in conjunction uh, with the, uh, the settings here. So, okay, so we're currently in the minus 40 dB range. So we would expect that uh, full scale, which is one volt RMS, uh, would correspond to minus 40 dB. Now, if we now just flick the lights out and have a look at what's happening on the display of the signal analyzer. You'll see that we are getting a harmonic power of minus 66.6.7 dB. So what we need to do is take another 40 dB from that. So that's around about minus 106.7. Uh, in this case, we're measuring THD. Um, over the first uh, first five harmonics, um, it's just, we're just looking at a small part of the spectrum there. Um, we could look a bit further, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanted that to be nice and clear on the screen. Um, 
as you can see the noise floor starts to rise so we do have some issues there um, you might think with a um, a device that can measure down to minus 80 db <laughs> not filtering into a de device that can also measure down minus 80 db that you get some whiz bang minus 160 db of dynamic range but it doesn't work that way uh, the noise floor and probably the residual distortion of the analog distortion meter um, start to rear their ugly head no, nevertheless we're, we're looking um, much more deeply into the uh, the distortion spectrum of our source and that's looking quite promising so I think that illustrates how we could perform the same thing on our device under test I hope you enjoy this little demonstration how with some inexpensive equipment and a bit of imagination you can improve your distortion measurements by about a factor of 10 Thanks for watching.